Hey, my name is Dr. TK and welcome to the Abundant Creator Podcast. On this podcast show, we will uncover prosperous tools to help you become the CEO of your business and your life. I am a mom and wife who merged my knowledge as a clinical psychologist and professor for over 20 years into building a multi six figure mental health business and seven figure digital product business serving others and doing what I love. Now, I believe that you can make a wildly abundant living unapologetically while also dreaming big, enjoying life, and making a huge impact. So if you are ready to achieve your biggest goals, then you are in the right place. So let's get started. Hey, what's up, y'all? Welcome back to The Car Chronicles. My name is Dr. TK, and today I will be talking about the power of following up via email marketing. And so I decided to cover this topic because I find that when I even have launches, it has been better for me and the people who are on my email list during a launch or a webinar or something like that, for them to start to understand not just the power of email marketing, but also being a consumer on the other end of email marketing, because then they will start to look at email marketing a lot differently. So what I'm going to do is walk you through two different email sequences in general of what it will look like to follow up um, and then get sales. And so let's just say you are in the beginning phases of wanting to launch your digital product, but you don't have an audience. So first things first, I would say to get an audience, you definitely want to test out whatever topic you are going to cover in your ebook and you want to start clearly putting out content so that you can see the interest of people that are interested in that you know, thing. So if I was doing my 60 digital product ideas, which is what I did, I started plugging in on Instagram and on YouTube um, different types of um, streams of income in the digital world that therapists may not have been aware of. Um, and then I would put a lot of, you know, value information in my captions. And what started to happen is people are like, well, wow, can you help me launch it? Or I didn't know that this type of digital product existed. So I knew that I was on the right track. Now, what would be the next step is to get these individuals on my email list. And one of the, I'm going to say, mistakes that entrepreneurs may make is that because they don't have the product yet, their digital product is not ready yet, their webinar is not ready to get people enrolled yet, then they will pause on getting people's email addresses. But here's the thing, you want, or let me ask you, would you rather have someone who is cold come to your, let's just say, live session if, you, if that's what you were doing? Or would you want someone who was lukewarm? And clearly the answer would be you want somebody who is lukewarm because now that they have gotten to, even in a short period of time, know, like, and trust you, now they're more open to even buying from you, okay? So I would, if I was having a digital download, I would, if I had nobody on my email list, I would go to ConvertKit and I'll drop the link in the description box. I have um, the ability for you to get a free trial and I would get something simple like ConvertKit. I like ConvertKit, my clients like ConvertKit because it looks just like, it doesn't look just like it, but it can operate just like a Gmail account. Um, but it's a customer relationship management system, an actual email marketing system called CRM. So you can start getting people on your list through your stories, through your lives, through your posts, through being on other people's platform like collaboration. And what you're going to give them in exchange for their email address and their first name, I would always get their first name, is what they're gonna get in return is something of value based on the, the topic that you told them that you're gonna give them. So what I find that does not work really well is when people say, unless you have a big following already like on social media, is get on my um, email list so you can get on my newsletter. All you're telling somebody is get on my email list so that I can send you some more emails. You're not telling them what's gonna be in the newsletter. Versus, I'll give you an example, is at one point I was doing a therapist workshops on, um, they were APA certified like CEs and they were on social media. So in order to warm up my audience before I even start enrolling people in my CE workshops and some of them were live in person and some of them were virtually, is I created a checklist um, initially on seven things to consider when you're promoting your mental health services on social media, primarily Instagram and Facebook. 
So I got a good amount of email subscribers. Let's just say a hundred or so. And then I realized that I had plateaued. I don't know if I was marketing to the same people, the same people were seeing it. I wasn't doing anything via Facebook ads at that time. And so I met with my mentor. It's always good to like pass things off in like your coaching program and let them know you need help. And what the person had told me, the person that was in charge of marketing with my coach, is she said, um, I wonder if you targeted the pain point versus the transformation. Because you could do either or. So we played around with the wording and we just literally changed the wording to seven things to avoid um, to keep your license like when you're promoting on social media. That's it. Man, that email list blew up. It went from, let's just say 100 to 500 people in a very short period of time. Of course, that took me having to create content, talk about it, you know, do, you know, do all those things. And then eventually I started doing Facebook ads or whatnot. So when I launched CE workshops, when I launched um, courses, memberships that had to do with therapists promoting their services on social media, I was now known for that area, right? And, you know, sometimes I would do CE workshops where it's like a double dip. You can build your business and get CE credits. And so I did that for about, no lie, like two years. And that's how I really got known. And then, of course, when they come on there, I'm also talking about, like, how you're going to use social media to leverage promoting and getting referrals for your private practice. Then that's how my private practice academy blew up as well. But what I'm saying is I got people hooked on something that would make them warm because the first email sequence is called the nurture sequence, okay? So let's just say that person got on my list because in exchange, I gave them something of value, something they wanted, something they can use right now. So when they got the confirmation email with the download, I let them know, hey, P.S., I'm going to be sending you some other valuable information. You know, sometimes it can come weekly or monthly. If you know you're going to send it every week, say that. Um, but at that time, I just didn't know because it depended on the season. But I did tell them, make sure they open up all my emails. So you want to let people know what's happening, right? That you're just not going to spam them, but that you're going to send them some of the value. It's going to be in bite-sized pieces, etc. So the confirmation email included the download itself. And I always include the download because I'm sure that, you know, you may have done this before. You sign up for something for free. When you give your name and email address, they give you the downloadable printout right then and there. But what if you did it on your phone? What if you were doing it in between sessions or something, right? You close out your browser. Now you got to go opt in again. And depending on how their system is set up, you may not even get it again if their system won't allow you to sign up again. So what I've taught my clients how to do is even though you may give them the download in the thank you portion of like the thank you page, still give it to them in the confirmation email, okay, as a PDF. And then just let them know what's coming down the pipeline. Then from there, what you start to do now is you're conditioning, you're training your audience to open up your emails. So this is why also some people who tap into email marketing, they say it doesn't work, primarily because you're sending your audience some BS that has nothing to do with what you offer. You're not giving them anything of value. You're only emailing them out of the blue every three to four months when you're selling something, launching something, and you're not keeping them up to date even with what's going on in your business, like a newsletter. So... Once you let them know what's happening, I would then email them again within one to two business days. There's no magic number, but I do one to two business days because I'm conditioning them to see my name in their inbox, okay? So in the second email, the second email could be me actually introducing myself. Now in this day and age, what I would encourage you to do is put a paragraph in there, but you can also do a video. You can link up a YouTube video. You can link them to an Instagram video, but let them hear you, let them see you, especially if one of your services is you doing therapy like talking, right? A service base, you do coaching. Um, if it's all digital, you're just doing digital downloads, then yeah, you can put something via text, but to spiff it up, I would definitely do a video. So after the second email, then it's up to you. If you've delivered all that you're gonna deliver, then at that point, it's really about figuring out what can you commit to right now in terms of how you're going to add value to the people on your list. It's not just getting people on your list. You wanna nurture your list so that they don't feel like they're only being sold to. Does that make sense? So that's called a nurture sequence. And typically a nurture sequence is three to five emails. Some people have more. It really depends on what you are adding um, in your emails. 
I know I've done a maximum of four. So the first one will be an intro. Um, here's your item. The second one will be, hey, I just want to let you know who I am just in case you haven't met me before or whatever. Um, email number three is I will tell them usually some books that help me become the abundant CEO that I am today and that I'm still evolving. So I'll link them to like my Amazon store. If you don't have an Amazon storefront, still give them the list of the books and tell them the value of the books or the resources or the videos. Or if you have a YouTube channel, that's something else that you can do is like link them to a particular video. And you don't, I said that you can put all three of these in one email, but if you have a YouTube channel, then like I could actually, if I was doing something on email marketing, I could put this video in one of the emails, right? And so that's email sequence number one is like the nurture campaign. Um, then sequence number two is, let's just say I took that social media downloadable guide and now I have a launch or some type of webinar or something like that or a live session because I am going to be enrolling people in my live event, my workshop or my course or just something more than something for free, okay? So what's gonna happen, and you definitely wanna get your pen and paper for this, what's gonna happen after they attend my live session? And again, there's no magic number, but what I have found is that at the, at the end of every launch, I realize I didn't email enough. And so quick disclaimer, in the beginning I had said, that I have to, I, I choose to train people about email marketing briefly so that they don't accidentally opt out because they can't join my program right now, but then they did not know, for example, that I was having a live event like three months later because they unsubscribed. So the analogy that I give my clients is, you know, what kind of emails do you get every week, every day? You get emails from department stores, you get a Macy's one day sale hell every Saturday. Um, you get emails from just all of these places and you never unsubscribe. And you're not even buying anything. You're not buying any new boots, but you get an email from Nordstrom 20 times for the half year uh, sale, right? But you don't unsubscribe. So why is it that you don't unsubscribe? Do you see something of value? Do you feel like you're gonna miss out on something? And that might be the case. And so I find that it's interesting that as entrepreneurs, we can say we want help in our business, we want to glow up our business, we want to glow up our bank account, and you connect it to somebody because they were of value at some point. But then because, let's just say, you signed up for a boot camp or a webinar, and maybe you don't understand email marketing, you then say by the second or third email, because the masterclass is over and they're doing what's called open enrollment via email marketing, because that's how we generate 95% of our sales, because 5% of people buy live and the other 95% actually buy via email reminders, just like an Amazon um, shopping cart, right? It reminds you that these things are in your shopping cart. And if you don't buy it, the price is gonna go up, the price is gonna go down, or guess what, quantity no longer available, right? But you don't unsubscribe from Amazon, right? So um, what I do is, let's just say I have the masterclass today at four o'clock. I'm more than likely going to send a thank you for attending email within an hour of you attending. It may send it sooner if I'm through a webinar platform where it's automated and the webinar platform can send emails, but me and my team tend to send emails through our system so that we can keep track um, of like what's happening. And so you usually will get some type of thank you email to, um, or I'm gonna say open enrollment email. So if you didn't do any live series, which you don't have to do, you can just simply say, I'm gonna send five emails this week and it's gonna be my open enrollment series, my um, discount series for my ebook or something like that. So, and sorry about the lighting, I'm under underpass. So, Let's just say I do a live class. I send an email saying thank you for attending. As promised, when we talk when we talked on the master class, I'm gonna give y'all first dibs for let's just say this early bird offer or whatever. So that email goes out. And if it's in the evening or even if it's in the day, you like that's the only email I'm sending. Okay. So um so then the night wraps up and then the next day, and please note all of these are scheduled out. Now I will say when I first started doing email marketing, I was creating them as I went because I wanted to tap into my flow of energy to make sure that what I wanted to see in the email was aligned with even what happened for me in my masterclass because that's what I do to like launch stuff or even like Instagram Live or something. So let's just say I have a coaching program. I'm gonna go through different streams of income. If I have a coaching program and it has an open and closed enrollment period, 
this is what it could look like. Day one may have extra bonuses. It might, you don't have to, but it might. So if I have extra bonuses on day one, I'm more than likely going to send one email in the morning as early as 6 a.m. because I'm Pacific Standard Time and people on the East Coast is already nine o'clock. So I'm gonna send one at six o'clock. And then I might send one in the middle of the day, but I'm not going to send it to everyone. I'm only going to send it to the people who did not open the first email. That's the beauty of these email marketing systems. You can go in and click and say, send it to whoever did not open the morning email. And then maybe you can change the subject line if you choose. Then 